assume that we have an equation representing the supply of a good of qs equals negative 10 plus 10p. Before I calculate the effect of the specific $2 tax and the 40% ad valorem tax on the supply of this good, I'm going to graph the original supply curve. To do that, I should probably start by finding the p-intercept of supply. To find the p-intercept, I can set qs to 0 and solve for p. Move the 10 over here, so I've got 10 equals 10p divide both sides by 10 and I can see that at a price of 1 our supply curve begins. So I'm going to graph the first supply curve on both of my graphs here. All I need is one other point on my supply curve so let's see what the quantity supplied is at a price of 5. I can do QS equals negative 10 plus 10 times the price of 5 and I get QS equals negative 10 plus 50 or QS equals 40. So now I have a second point for my supply curve. At a price of $5, the quantity supplied will be 40 on this original, on this original supply equation. Now I can connect these two dots and I've got my original supply curve here. I'll call this S1 equals MC1. Let's clean this up and calculate the effect of a $2 specific tax or a 40% ad valorem tax. As you learned in an earlier lesson, to calculate the effect of a tax on the supply equation for a good, you must subtract the amount of the tax from the price of the good and find the new supply equation. So let's do that here. We can do QS equals negative 10 plus 10 times price minus the $2 tax. Because the tax has to be paid by the sellers of the good to the government, therefore whatever price consumers pay, producers are going to keep $2 less. Let's simplify this equation. QS equals negative 10 plus 10 times P minus 10 times 2, which is 20. I can now simplify this again, and I've got my new supply equation of negative 30 plus 10 P. So this is the new supply equation following the $2 specific tax. To graph this, I must first find the P-intercept. So I'll set QS equal to 0 and solve for P move the 30 over here. I've got 30 equals 10p. Divide both sides by 10 and I've got the p-intercept of 3. So I know my new supply curve is going to begin at a price of 3. Now we need to add another point in our supply curve. So let's plug in another price from our graph and we can find a second point to create our supply curve. I'm going to use $4 this time. So I'll say QS equals negative 30 plus 10 times 4. Let's simplify this. QS equals negative 30 plus 40, which is 10. So I know at $4, 10 units will be supplied. Now this looks a lot like the non-mathematical example we did earlier. If I connect these two points from my supply curve, I have a new supply curve of S2 equals MC2. Notice that there is no change in the gradient or the slope of my supply curve following a specific tax. The entire curve shifted up by the amount of the tax, just like the illustration I did earlier without the equation. Now let's move on and calculate the effect of the ad valorem tax of 40%, a 40% tax on the price of the good produced. This calculation requires a slightly different method. We can use the original formula of QS equals negative 10 plus 10 times price minus 0.4, the 40% tax, of the price. So the rationale here is that whatever price consumers pay, producers get to keep 40% less of that. 40% of the price consumers pay must be paid to the government. So I can simplify this now. QS equals minus 10 plus 10 times P minus 10 times 0.4P, which is 4P. Forgot my P there. Simplify it again. QS equals negative 10 plus 10P minus 4P equals 6P. Notice that the difference here is that the Q intercept of supply or the C variable has not changed. However, the D variable, which represents how responsive producers are to price changes, has changed. So what's going to happen? The gradient of my supply curve is going to change.
Let's find the new P intercept. I can set QS to 0 and solve for P. Move the 10 over here. I've got 10 equals 6P. Divide both sides by 6. And I've got the P intercept of 10 over 6, which is 1.67 if you simplify that on your calculator. So now I can show on my graph the new P intercept of 1.67, which is right around here. Now I need one more point for my supply curve. Let's plug in a price of 4 and find out what the quantity supplied will be at $4. So I'll do QS equals negative 10 plus 6 times 4. I get QS equals negative 10 plus 24, which gives me a quantity supplied of 14. I can put that on my graph. At $4, I'll have a quantity supplied of 14. Now I can connect these two points, and I've got my new supply curve. As you can see, the gradient has increased. Whatever the price is, the supply curve will be 40% higher than it was originally. So we can see this is shifted up by 40%, whereas when there's a specific tax, the supply curve shifts up by a constant amount of $2. So now we've shown the impact of both a specific tax and an ad valorem tax. The main difference is that a specific tax will shift a supply curve up by a constant amount at all points, whereas an ad valorem tax will shift a supply curve up and change the gradient of the supply curve. However, it pivots along the quantity intercept. If I connected both of these all the way down to where the curves have begun, that point does not change. That is still negative 10. However, the gradient has increased when there is an ad valorem tax placed on a good. Here we go.